Yep. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm going to be speaking about one of my favorite topics, idiopathic intracranial hypertension, and hopefully give you a few updates uh, for uh, the time. I'm going to review some diagnostic criteria for IIH and um, also uh, talk about uh, uh, vision threatening papilledema and what we have been doing about it. I'm also going to mention some uh, new treatments that seem promising, uh, discuss a couple of surgical options, and then end on how important it is to treat this condition to uh, prevent future health problems. So I'm going to start with this case. This is uh, Sharon. She's 34 years old. She's sent for disc swelling, headaches, She's had recent weight gain. She's been really quite healthy. She has some dim outs of vision. She has whooshing noises in her head. She has uh, more headaches than usual. And she has visual field changes and she has papilledema. However, what if her nerves look like this? Um, and, and as ophthalmologists, we're often asked to see people and say, is there papilledema or not? So uh, several years ago, Deb Friedman and Grant Liu and I uh, uh, revised the criteria for the diagnosis of pseudotumor cerebri syndrome. As you recall, this, is, this means that there is papilledema, a normal neuro exam, normal imaging, include in our uh, place, we use MRV or CTV in almost everybody. The spinal fluid has to be normal and the pressure is elevated. Um, and it, you can have secondary pseudotumor that's due to some cause like venous sinus thrombosis, but you can have primary idiopathic intracranial hypertension uh, with these criteria. Uh, to diagnose pseudotumor without papilledema, you have to have either a unilateral or bilateral six nerve palsy, which occurs very infrequently. And then we suggested that at least three out of four imaging findings can help suggest the diagnosis like empty cella, flattening of the posterior globe, distension of the perioptic uh, nerve, and uh, transverse venous sinus stenosis. And uh, we actually validated these criteria with a retrospective study looking for the different causes like empty cell, a flattened globe. And now several studies have actually corroborated our findings in this study. Um, I think the Emory group, though, has brought out that we have to be careful not to overdiagnose uh, intracranial hypertension. We have a thinking error that every obese woman that walks in our door with a headache has this condition. And the second problem is the examination errors. Even really seasoned ophthalmologists and a few neuro-ophthalmologists sometimes get fooled by the optic nerve appearance, either the crowded disc or optic distrusion or pseudoedema. And then Sometimes we don't think about other causes that could cause increased intracranial pressure, like asking about medications, tetracycline, lithium, and others, and sleep apnea. And especially neurologists sometimes get uh, hooked on this pressure. Diagnosing this condition by pressure alone is not a good idea because too many things affect the pressure, like how the patient's position, whether they're sedated, what the needle position is, uh, et cetera. And there's a wide variety and variation uh, on pressure. Um, so the big problem with this condition is visual loss. And um, it, it can occur in many different series between one and 7% have blindness and a quarter may have permanent uh, visual loss. Um, and I want ophthalmologists to be aware of what we call fulminant IIH or vision threatening papilledema. And this is a 48 year old man. He came in with headaches and dim outs of vision. His acuity was 20 20. And as you know, acuity is the last to go in this condition. He had bilateral severe swelling as well as peripapillary hemorrhages. And you can see his visual fields are also very um, severely affected. So when should you worry about visual loss? Well, many of these people have a delay in treatment. They may have had long-standing swelling and that they didn't really go to get seen. And we found out that male gender is actually a risk factor for visual loss, whether they don't come in in time or, um, or whatever. 
and in our country, uh, individual African Americans are three times more likely to be blind. If an individual has underlying severe anemia, or they have increased intraocular pressure, or sleep apnea, um, and the very obese, usually those are some of the risk factors for uh, significant visual loss. We've developed a uh, papilledema, vision threatening papilledema protocol, where if the person has papilledema, we can confirm it with uh, ophthalmology consult. And if it's vision threatening, we look for a treatable cause of the papilledema. And if we don't find that, we admit them to our neuro neurocritical care unit and do lumbar drain, treat with high dose acetazolamide. If they respond to that treatment, then we just follow them. But if they don't respond, then we consider an optic nerve sheath fenestration and uh, sometimes CSF diversion therapy. And we reviewed our, some of our cases, uh, 13 cases, and we did find that the acuity improved, the visual uh, fields also improved in almost 90% of these people. We had a couple people who did not have any improvement at all. But this is something that I think, uh, at least to be aware of, a way to temporize fulminant IIH. Now, the idiopathic intracranial hypertension treatment trial showed us that the treatment of, of acetazolamide, two to four grams, plus weight loss, was an excellent treatment. Other diuretics can be used, like ferrosamide and spironolactone. And topiramate actually has been shown to lower intracranial pressure and better uh, control headaches. So this is something ophthalmologists may not be aware of, that you can use to pyramid, starting with low doses and going slow. Um, one of the new exciting treatments is a glucagon-like peptide. Uh, it's a, a GLP-1R agonist, um, exenatide, and it's used to treat diabetes and promote weight loss. And it's been studying, it's been studied in laboratory animals, it's now being studied in humans, and a clinical trial is underway. And it reduces CSF secretion and lowers intracranial pressure without any hypoglycemia. And this was just presented at Nanos. Um, so I, I think this is going to be a very exciting uh, drug to look at for the future. Uh, this year, uh, this last year of uh, this wonderful study came out of Birmingham. England, uh, Susan Mullen reported uh, studying 66 women over five years. They randomized people to either Weight Watcher program or a bariatric surgery. And the intracranial pressure was lowered by 60 millimeters in the bariatric surgery program. And you can see the bariatric surgery people had the best weight loss and also their intracranial pressure also reduced. Their quality of life improved uh, and uh, this result was uh, continued for 24 months. Um, but they found that a person had to lose 24% of their body weight to normalize intracranial pressure, which is really a lot of weight. And bariatric surgery can accomplish that goal. Um, there are other surgical treatments. Uh, optic nerve sheath fenestration uh, is frequently used. Shunts are also used in certain areas of our country. And then venous stenting, where uh, a stent is placed in the transfer of sinus, and this relieves the, the pressure. Now, in an excellent recent review, uh, um, I'm summarizing here for you, stents, shunts, and nerve sheath fenestrations all reduce papilledema. Uh, all of them improved visual fields by over 50%. Um, the stents and shunts helped the headache. Uh, optic nerve sheath fenestration was not as successful. Uh, many of them did have to have reoperations, and there were complications to each procedure. Uh, in the stenting category, uh, there was included death. Um, and shunts, the one problem with those is that they often fail. And in nerve sheath fenestrations, you can have uh, visual loss as well. What about the headaches? What did we learn from the idiopathic intracranial hypertension treatment trial? First, we learned that headache is really common in IIH patients. And a lot of these women, mostly women, have underlying migraine history. And the headache phenotype is migraine or probable migraine. And what we found was that the visual quality of life was linked to the HIT-6. The HIT-6 is a measurement of how bad the headache is. So as the headache was worse and worse and worse, so the visual quality of life also worsened. What I thought was extremely interesting is that the headache 
did not correlate with opening pressure, BMI, weight loss, papilledema grade, or visual field loss. And if you took those with, head with, um, with and without headache, their opening pressures were about the same. So it's clear that some people are more prone to headache than others. How do we treat the headache associated with increased intracranial pressure? The adage is to use a symptomatic treatment like a triptan along with a preventative. And the two new drugs that have been studied recently have been onobotulinum toxin and the CGRP monoclonal antibodies um, along with other ones. We don't treat um, increased intracranial pressure with a shunt for headache alone, it should only be reserved for visual loss because headaches will recur within a year uh, after getting the shunt placed. We also try to avoid medications that cause weight gain like Valproid, pregabalin, uh, and so forth. Um, and I promised you that it's really important that we pay attention to this disease because it portends a future vascular risk. In this study done also in Birmingham, where they looked at age and weight matched individuals in a very large database and, and paired them up with individuals with IIH, they found that IIH conferred a twofold increased risk of uh, cardiovascular, cerebrovascular disease, such as heart failure, stroke, uh, hypertension, and diabetes. So I think it's important that we get this disease treated and, um, and that we prevent further uh, problems. I, I want to leave you with IIH is a team sport. Uh, the ophthalmologist is critical. The neurologist is critical. Our general practitioners and emergency medicine people will feed us these patients. Our job is to di diagnose papilledema, get visual fields on everybody, look for vision-threatening papilledema, and then get treatments going immediately. Um, in, in conclusion, IIH is a package diagnosis. You have to have symptoms and signs, beware of anomalous discs and overdiagnosis. We want to, our treatment is going to focus on weight loss and normalizing the pressure. We watch out for this vision threatening papilledema, treat aggressively, know what surgical procedures exist in your area, and partner with a neurologist to help you with the headache treatment because that is very challenging and affects the visual quality of life. And I, I'm going to give a plug for Dr. Kadar's talk on, on the novel uh, library, but there are handouts on pseudotumor cerebri in this library in numerous languages, and you can download these for free uh, for educational purposes. And thank you so much for having me in India tonight for you, this morning for me, um, and I'm so glad I could be here with you.